Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Don't Kill the Messenger with Victor from Bento Bot. And on today's episode, I have a special guest here we're gonna, where she really runs a, a group called the Finishers Club, helping creative entrepreneurs have fun getting things done easier and faster with way better results. Now, uh, before we begin, if you're looking to get things done faster and really do that, but you need to actually bring people into your world and generate never-ending leads. Head on over to ventobots.com forward slash book to get your free copy of the complete automation strategy. The four phases we take our private clients through to generate never-ending leads and go from the best kept secrets to the go-to authority in your market online. Now, I welcome in my guest today, Amy Thompson. Hey, Amy, how you doing? Hi, Victor. Thanks for having me. I'm definitely interested in your book, so <laughs> I love it. I want to look into that more. Yeah, yeah. So awesome. So like, there's a lot to go about. Like, I feel like th this is what happens, right? As far as creative, I, I consider myself a creative. Um, and I built a team to really help me to do the things that I needed to do. Because uh, I'm sure if you run into this before, um, it's like, I have all these ideas, but then the implementation part is what drains me. Have you heard anything like that before? Or anything, uh, something of that nature? so many entrepreneurs go through that and especially creative <laughs> ones. I mean, I think you have to be creative to be an entrepreneur in the first place, but there are a couple of things that happen is sometimes the ideas come too fast and furious for people to be able to manage. And second, um, entrepreneurs often have a tendency to get bored. So when they're working on something and they have to do all of the pieces, even if they can do it, they don't necessarily want to be the person wearing all the hats. They shouldn't be the person wearing all the hats and they need to be able to, like you said, have that team around them and be able to fulfill on these creative fantasies that they've got. Right, so like that's, I, I often, my, uh, my, my team members often hear me say like, all right, I got like 20 ideas, I'm, I'm about to shoot out like 30 bad ones and one good one. And, and then they just kind of like allow, it just allows the, the juices to kind of start going and everyone starts collaborating and it really helps. Um, but I know not everyone starts there. So like what, what are some of the things you found to really help people get things done faster or, or with more, with more fun or easier? Well, it's funny you said that because uh, getting things out is one of the ways, one of the top ways of harnessing your creative energy. It's like we have things inside us and we need to get out. And if you've got a sounding board or people who, who can hear you for that, amazing. Get them all out, capture the good ones. A lot of people don't have that sounding board yet and they can write things down. I have a technique personally that I do the scribble clearing technique and I like scribble all of my emotions out and anything that's there because it, it literally just the act of doing something physical, it can help clear your mind. It can be sports, it could be music, it could be anything that's expressive, but clearing your mind and then you'll be able to tune into that one biggest domino or best idea. And, and that's one of the techniques. I, I love it. So uh, de definitely like scribbling, kind of like journaling or scribbling it down, just a place like even if you have a whiteboard, right, a, a place to kind of just list out and just furiously just shoot without any, any like judgment of what is coming out. Is that kind of what you're saying? Well, there's that and I'm an artist. So for me, I mean, I literally like I will scribble with brand, like scribble. Because oh, oh, what like happens what happens is it's just like there's there's thoughts, there's ideas, there's tensions, there's reasons behind things. Oh, I can't do that because of this, or I should do that, or I should do that first. Like all of these things that cloud your mind. And believe it or not, just scribbling things out, like freeze that. And you wanna know something funny? Yeah. I do this thing in my workshops where I actually have people close their eyes and they scribble to music. Doesn't matter if they're using their right hand or their left hand, I can look at what they've drawn and I can tell them what's going on in their life and I can help them to solve what's there. So people are like, wow, that's so crazy, but it's just an expression of energy, right? And we have to like let things out to be able to be clear. I love that. That's, that's actually really cool because like, you're, it creates an experience, right? So that, that's, that's awesome. So, but what would you say like really stops people, really kind of like blocks them or holds them back from, from moving forward? Um, <laughs> there are so many things, it's, it's always, it always comes down to fear. But there are so many things. I started the Finishers Club because I would get 95 to 99 percent done something, and then I would stop. I had this tendency within myself to go, "Okay, well, I've proved that I can do it. I don't need to." And we all have stories, right? It doesn't matter what your story is. There's something that stops you 
I used to have something else about um, worrying about running out of things. So I would get things most of the way done and then I would save them. I became a hoarder. <laughs> I know it's an embarrassing thing to admit, but you know what? It's just like we have these things. So I, I learned to let go of things. I help people let go of people, situations, clutter, anything. It's like you free yourself. Uh, you can move forward so powerfully. So many ways. Awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, like that's, I know at the very beginning for me, that was kind of one of the biggest things when I was, it was just me, right? Solopreneur. And um, that was looking back to then, it was hard to get things done because I had to make sure I really focus and drove through something when I, I know I needed to get it done because I know in the future that would, that would pay off. Um, do you have any like techniques or anything like that, that that people can do when they're kind of in that space of like, they're driving and they're kind of just starting to run out of gas and it's, it's like, how do you get people to really finish? Considering that happens to me on a regular basis and pretty much everyone I know, yes, I have techniques. Um, I set a timer. Like I, my favorite technique is to set a timer and make a game. I go, I'm going to complete this by the end of this song. I do things in songs because I like music. Okay. Or I do things in, in minutes or five minutes and I reward myself. It's like, okay, great. I really want to have this, you know, this cup of tea or this drink or go outside for a walk. And it's like, if I get this done, wow, I've earned it. And it, it's really hyping up your mindset to be able to, to do things and push, push through. Um, sometimes meditation, right? Because again, it's like you calm your body and your mind and often believe it or not, it's exercise. It's like, I've been stagnant because I've been at the computer too long or like working with people too long. And you really got to have that time to just get outside, do something that's completely different. Then you can come back and, and look at something fresh. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So it's, it's really like taking those micro breaks. It sounds like is really what helps to break up that monotony of like, cause I, I've been known to do that. Like I, I, I switched back and forth between standing and sitting. Uh, but I know when before it was just sitting, like after about three hours, you kind of, you kind of become unproductive and I didn't take a break or anything like that. And it was kind of like, now, now what? It just became kind of really just, oh, it was, it was almost uphill trying to just get the next thing done. Um, and, and once I started doing things like that, like I have an hourglass actually that I flip over. Uh, my daughter actually loves flipping it over and then, yeah, you know, but it's like, it's like a visual thing. And I'm like, cool, I'm going to do this thing for that long. And then I'm I, like, I get to do something. Right. Mm -hmm. So wh whatever that is, walk around the house, go upstairs, uh, play with the kiddos or whatever that looks like. Right. But it's, it's like, it's very important. I think a lot of people miss that. Um, yeah. So help There's me a couple more like, things. Can the, I share two more things there? So one of the things is, um, people often become less productive when they're not tuned into their bodies. So it's like if you like do a little check and you're like, okay, what is it that I need right now? Often it's as simple as like, I need to stretch or I need to stand up, right? And people don't, they, they're so focused on the external that they're not focused on what they need for themselves. Um, and there was one other thing I was going to say, but I don't remember. So let's just move on. <laughs> come back. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like, that, it's, it's true because I, I, I've, once I started implementing things like that, it's really, once you get to a certain, it's interesting, once you get to a certain level um, in business, you start to really look at things, because um, I'm sure you've got this, right? Like, oh, I don't know, that kind of sounds like things like that, the meditation and like that stuff doesn't work or it's like a woo-woo and stuff like that, right? I'm sure you've heard that before. And what I found was I, I was actually in that person mindset before. Like when I first started, I was like, I don't need that stuff. I just... I just need to do what I need to do. But as you grow in levels of success and your, your business grows, I feel like you start to really look for things that really help with productivity, right? You really start looking inward like, okay, how can I, I don't like using the word hack, but how can I hack, like how can I biohack or how can I like create things around me to really make sure that I'm the most productive in the least amount of time possible? Or you know what I mean? Does that, does that kind of, Oh, it totally does. There's, there's a couple things, and this is what I was going to say before where I forgot, but um, it is learning to use your energy effectively, knowing when you're at your best, knowing if you still want to put in some time and you're not at your best, where to put it on the, the tasks that need less thought and focus. Oh, and when you're talking, yeah, When you're talking about setting up your environment, 
uh, you were talking about how to create your space for the most productive um, sessions or times. There are so many techniques I can teach you. Like I teach mindset and I create art and design to help people literally be empowered in their own spaces. But um, one of the things is you have to make your space pleasing for you. You have to be in a space where you are empowered and feeling good because when you're feeling good, your productivity goes way up. And when you're feeling bad, you know, like you got all this chatter going on in your head, you have to constantly yeah. clear. Like you got to constantly clear the stuff out of your head so that you can get back and be productive again. So, do you want to hear some some techniques? Sure, sure. Let's let's hear them. Okay, great. Um, so, when it goes to your bedroom, for example, a lot of people who I work with in the finishers club they tend to have messy bedrooms. I'm not gonna lie. Not everybody does, but there's, there's stuff either the closet isn't cleared out or, or there isn't, uh, it isn't set up the way that they want because they're, they're trying to do all these things. So yeah. one of the first things to do in a bedroom or anywhere in your house, if you want to have it nice and clean, start with the largest, most visual space, whether it's just making a bed, anything. Yeah. And little by little, uh, as you see one big space and it feels good, you're more inspired to do something else. You're more inspired to do something else. I work with a lot of people who have a tough time cleaning, like massive ADHD. And, uh, and so it's like literally just pick up one thing and learn to work with that one thing. This is perfect for anybody who claims to be multitaskers in business. You know, I'm just saying it doesn't always relate to your house. It could be that you've got a desk covered in a whole bunch of different things or you're working on all these different projects. It's learning to take one thing at a time and just give it your all one thing at you and put it where it needs to, to go. Um, I could talk about emails with that and I could talk about all kinds of other, other things that entrepreneurs deal with. Yeah, no, I'm sure. I'm sure. Like, cause I, I mean, I, I am a firm believer that I am, I'm a firm believer that multitasking is not a thing. <laughs> People think it's a thing, but, it's not a thing. I, I think it, it's more of a distraction. It, I think it's, it, personally, I feel like multi, someone who believes they, multi, they can multitask well um, is more under the impression that, that they need to be, they need to make sure everyone thinks, how do I say this? Um, essentially, they, they don't want to disappoint anybody. That's, that's what I think, that's what I truly believe what's behind the person that says, like, I'm a good multitasker. I think, okay, because I think multitaskers, I think of mothers who have like a baby in one arm and yeah. all these other things. <laughs> yeah, I get right? that. And just because I'm a mom, I'm like, okay, great. So there is, there is multitasking, but there's task switching, which I think when you learn how to task switch, which I think was what you're alluding to, because you can only be really good at one thing at a time. Um, you are able to manage different things, but you're not trying to do it all at once. You know, you're yeah. able to really focus and get into it and, and complete that. That's that? interesting. I've never heard those two separated. I usually bundle those two together, like task switching and multitasking, which They're very, is very different because it's yeah. like I have, um, because I play, I play games. I make everything a game. I turn them into, you know, I'm going to do this for this and it's going to be done. I set my, my core objectives and sometimes like, you know, when you're working on something and it feels like you're hitting a wall and no matter what you're doing, it's not working. Yep. It's like, that would be a good time for me to task switch to a different task or area because that has no resistance. And then when I go back to the other task, that thing that was like stopping me is gone. And it's amazing what happens when, when I do that because I still have the same objectives for the day. My objectives haven't changed. I've been able to achieve them. And I've just managed my time a little bit better by not continuing to fight what isn't working. Make sense? Yeah, no, no, it, I, I get it. That, that's interesting because it, 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 it really, like again, it, it, for me, it kind of separates the two, which I've never, I've never thought of that way. Um, first, so, but it, it's interesting. Cause like, cause that, that's just how I believe it. I was like, People who say like they're great at multitasking, I think what I, I guess what really what I'm thinking is people who say that they're great at um, like doing it all at the same time, task switching, right? Mm -hmm. They're just 
really trying to hide the fact that they want to be a people pleaser, uh, which, you know, like sometimes you can't be, you, you, you do one thing really well, then move on to the next. Um, but yeah, that, that's super interesting. Do you have any... Um, I'm trying something new that somebody told me and I'm really excited about it. Sure. Okay. Um, I'm doing my top three things for 90 days and ignoring everything else, which was very challenging for me to do because I manage, uh, I manage a few businesses and like my teams are building. So it's getting easier and easier every day. Like you said, you need teams. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited because it's like I get to pour my love and passion and everything that I want to do on the side. That's waiting. That's waiting. I've got a set date. It's September 7th. That's when I get to look at it again and reassess. But I'm always looking for new and better ways to uh, do things myself and also to help other people. So I've been researching for over 20, I don't know how many, I'm pretty old now, but researching better ways to do things yeah. for many, many years. And uh, so this is, this is a new one and I'm really excited about it. Okay, that, that's cool. So it's, I mean, cause it's true. Like I, I'm, we're always looking to get better at what we do. Um, so what, what are, what are some of the things that you found that really help, um, especially now, right. In in this kind of, um, home alone, like social distance world where we're forced to really be away from everybody and not really interact with people at live events or in person, like what have you found to really help to overcome like this, I feel like there's like a a mountain of like ah I don't I, I can't move forward. There's like this stress or anxiety or something like that. Yeah, it's amazing how a lot of people had social anxiety about going out, and now all those people are pretty happy about being in their shells. And a lot of people now who would go out are really experiencing social anxiety from another perspective. Um, it's it's kind of neat how that works, but. Uh, I would say mindset is key. Like first thing in the morning when you wake, get your mindset right. It's the most important thing. I do a lot of positive affirmations. Um, I have like in my finishers club workbooks, for example, that's what's on the table behind me, by the way. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. So, so I actually use my own system and uh, it focuses on mindset first and productivity. So it's really, it's really getting your head clear. Um, creating what you want to create, looking for opportunities, looking for conversations, action steps. Um, it even tracks like, it tracks your conversations and your water and like, it, it's got all kinds of great things, but uh, it really has, it really helps me to be able to stay on top of everything. So even if I have days where I, I break down for whatever reason, I can always pick back up. It's very forgiving. And, okay, uh, yeah, that, interesting. Is it Mindset is, I, I know that's definitely a big thing. Um, and I feel like it, it can be easily thrown off for a lot of people too. Do you have anything for people that, for example, like something does, let's say in the middle of the day, something just randomly happens because um, we can't control what happens in, in our lives. But for the most part, when something like that randomly happens, um, but let's say some bad news comes your way or something just completely throws you off. You're in a great day and just completely 180s. Is there anything that you can, that you help people do that really uh, help them get back on track? I am going to share my, my number one best trick that I use personally. And it seems like really, seems really grade schoolish. Okay. It's very, very, very simple, but I've got this little notebook. Okay. And I write three things I can do to make me feel better now. Three things I can do to make me feel better now, because when I get thrown off, and I know that mindset is what's going to help me get back on track with anything. Yeah. The most important thing for me is to feel good, to get back to that space of things are possible and things will work. And I don't care if I have to do this three, four or five times in a row for me to get back into that space. When I'm there, anything's possible. I can do, I can do anything. Right. Okay. So yeah, that, that's, that's awesome. Cause I mean, it's, I, I, you, you, you never know when that's coming, right? It kind of just like sideswipes you. You're like, whoa, what, what happened? And then to have something like in your back pocket to really, it's like, okay, three things I can write down right now that make me feel better, which I completely agree with. But when you're in that better state of mind, you're just, when you sort of feel better, like you, you're, you just get to a better state of mind. Um, and it'll really allows you to just kind of write back into it and overcome a lot of that, um, that unknown that kind of came your way. Yeah, 
We're and people can, people can go from having a fantastic day to having a terrible day and have no idea why, what, like what happened that switched. They could be feeling great and suddenly they just don't. And so this is a great, a great tool. Um, I often use it. I would say I use it probably every day or two easily. Awesome. And often when you write what will make you feel better, it's, it's often something very simple. It could be like, I'm going to change my shirt. You know, I'm going to do something with my hair. Just like some little tiny thing. It can only, it can only has to be a tiny thing, but a little bit of feeling better, it adds up. It's just, and yeah, it's just you're feeling good again. Mm -hmm. I love it. Cool. Okay. So then what are the, what are some of the, cause here's the thing. I feel like once you are aware of what's happening and you're that you're in this kind of state of funk or whatever, then you can start to make these, these take these steps that you've mentioned um, in the last couple of minutes here and really start to move forward past it. How do you know you're there before? Does, does that make sense before you actually get there? Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to clarify, how do you know you're in a negative state or in a positive state? N negative state. Okay. Um, you know how I said earlier that people just don't have a habit of tuning into their body and checking in? I have a technique that I call rated on a scale. I've got like a positive three and a negative three. Positive three is like, I'm feeling really good. Negative three is things are terrible. Zero is very rare. It's almost like never a zero because you either feel a little good or a little not so good. And if there's ever a four either way, it's like off the charts. It's like catastrophically terrible or, oh my God, that's the most amazing thing ever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as long as you take a, like you just check in with yourself periodically and you've got to still yourself for a second and go, how do I feel? And sometimes we're going through our day and we feel like everything's fine until we do that check-in and then you realize, wait a minute, I'm actually kind of sad. But without doing that check-in you you can be so involved in external stuff that you don't you don't really notice what's going on within you interesting because I, I know like I, I asked that was for selfish reasons because i know i've gotten stuck in places like that before where like it's just a really busy day but then afterwards you kind of feel super drained and more than normal and i feel like it's because you're you've been in that state but you've just been so focused externally that it doesn't um it doesn't what like you, you didn't check in um, yeah. So how, how would, how would you recommend someone kind of start that if it wasn't a habit to begin with? It is not a habit. Um, you actually have to try it the first time, I guess to start it. It's just like, try it, see how it works. Some people aren't even practiced in tuning in at all. It might feel weird for somebody to even get in touch with themselves, but it's noticing like what vibrations or sensations do I feel in my body? And then you start to, like, the more you start to do it, the more aware you become. And then it becomes kind of second nature. You become very in tune so that when things go off at all, you're like, oh, something's up. And then as long as you've got the tools, you're fine. Can I show you one more of the tools that I have? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I'm an artist, like I said, and I do, um, I do positive affirmation artwork. And these are... Um, they're all positive affirmations designed to transform people's mindsets. But if you look really closely, they're all words. It's tough to tell on the computer. Yep. But there's, there's so many, so many different ones. And um, by just reading a couple of them, just have a look at a few of them. Like I'm unhindered in my growth. I have my head in the clouds and I love it. You know, um, I embrace change. I forgive myself and others easily. After reading a few of them, one of them is going to start to click with something that's going on within you. And then it actually starts to calm you down and shift things. So Interesting. this is another yeah. tool I use to help mindset. Yeah, and I put them I, up on I, posters and things in my house, right? <laughs> I love that. No, because it's like you technically you're the voice inside your customer's head, a prospective customer, right? Or, or prospective client's head. Like, you're really saying it and you, like you said, one of those phrases is going to resonate with someone depending on where they're at and their state of mind. Um, and they can always go back and then another phrase in that same picture could resonate more exactly. so than it did before, two weeks ago or something like that, which is super interesting. I, I like that. Um, so I, I know you have a few things for us to kind of really help us move over, uh, like really overcome any of, of, of these like mental funks that we're in. Um, 
where can we go to really find out more or, or to kind of go from there? So I'm in the midst of, uh, and thank you for asking that. I'm in the midst of linking all of my different websites um, because I offer a few things and I wanted to make sure they were separate. People get confused yeah. if you don't keep things separate. So um, you could find them all at amythompson.ca and Thompson has no P. It's just A-M-Y-T-H-O-M-S-O-N dot C-A. And that way awesome. I can link the different things. Cool. So like amythompson.ca, um, not dot com, dot C-A. So C -A. that you can go and you can get all those tools uh, at your disposal, right? Like it, it's, it seems like that'd be super helpful to, to really go in and help not just one like check in but if you if you need some kind of release so that we can't like like i mentioned in the very beginning where i have a team that i can kind of just spitball ideas and then you know they let the ones that aren't the best kind of just slide we never talk about them again and then we we go into we're like hey this was really good let's kind of dive into that um if you need that kind of release whether like you said music or anything um this really helps to physically go and go, go about that scribble, whether you're coloring or you're writing or whatever that is to really overcome that and really start checking in. Um, I feel like that will definitely help you become more productive. It definitely does. And I don't know if I can share my screen or not. I don't know if I've got that option, but if I could, can I do so? I want to show you something. Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I just, right. I just turned it on. Yeah. So I also have canvases and um, pillows and things. This would be for your home. And this would be the letter V. I made sure it was for your name. Victor yeah, that's cool. And then, so this one would say, music fills my heart. I easily let go of the past. I choose to live in peace and joy. But there are a bunch of different sayings and all of them are different for every one of the letters. But the whole thing I'm trying to do is have people's environments be able to be created in a way that empowers them very easily and gracefully. Okay? Nobody wants things like pushed into their head or anything, but this is something that people can do that can be um, just gently reinforcing them that things are really good. I just want to share that. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, where can I get me one of those? Because I'm like, oh man, I've been looking for some decor for the office here, and that would be awesome. That's so cool. My website for that is happynow.store. Happynow.store. So I'm going to definitely go get that. Um, and especially if it's a V, call me like whatever you want. But I, I was like, because it's a V, I'm going to definitely go get it too. So um, yeah. It's, and it's awesome. I want your book because like uh, lead generation and automation, like, automating things that's the step i'm at right now and i'm really excited about it yeah. so when you're talking about your book i'm like i'm getting one <laughs> right yeah awesome yeah. well cool well thank you so much for coming on today i know we're kind of wrapping up on time here but uh, there were some great gold nuggets in here and definitely re-watch or re-listen so that you can go over those like really one of the main ones that i got away was the scribbling right making sure we can do that and it doesn't necessarily i i immediately took that as like, like journaling. But as Amy mentioned, it does not necessarily mean journaling. You could literally just be scribbling on a page, um, kind of just some kind of physical release, exercising move, move it, movement of some kind, breathing techniques, things like that. Yeah, like she, she just held up a, uh, a notepad with a bunch of scribbles and it really helps to solidify the ideas that you have as you're doing it to really start to dive into them a little bit more, which is super awesome to think about. Um, little hacks like that really go a long way. Uh, and I know there's a bunch more that she talked about, but that was definitely for me one that stood out. Um, so definitely head on over to amythompson.ca. Again, A-M-Y-T-H-O-M-S-O-N dot C-A. And you can get some of the free resources that she's offering and whatnot, and we can go from there. So That's awesome. And I've got something for your audience as well. Sure, absolutely, go for it. So I wanna give you guys uh, three of my favorite mindset and finishers club tools. And so for that, I will put them on amythompson.ca to make it easy under the finishers club. And also you'll be able to go and get any of my online programs for 20% off and you will be able to get it just by entering uh, Vento, V-E-N-T-O. And that will give awesome. you 20% off. 
Yep, so enter Vento and you get 20% off of programs. Um, and definitely get those free resources for sure to, to start overcoming any mind funk or any funk that you might be in, especially now. It, it's hard and it, most people don't, aren't talking about it, but a lot of people are really feeling kind of stuck, overwhelmed, and like, what do we do next? And it's kind of, it's not business as usual anymore. Business is changing. Business has changed and it has been for a while and it's definitely now been forced upon a lot of people. So head on over to amythompson.ca to get all of your free resources and you can go from there. Let me know what you've overcome, what you're able to do, how productive you are. I'd love to hear that in the comments below. Awesome. Thank now, uh, well, thank you again, Amy, so much for coming on. Thanks for having I, me. It's amazing. Truly appreciate it. Yeah, no, uh, this is definitely a, a hot topic that I love talking about because it, it does. It really helps to overcome a lot. Um, so until next time, I'm Victor with Bentabot. And now before I forget, if you're looking to generate never-ending leads online, head on over to bentobot.com forward slash book to get your free copy of the complete automation strategy, four phases to generate never-ending leads. And you can get your free copy, just cover shipping and sends it over to you. And we'll, you'll be able to start generating leads the way we do for our private clients. And until next time, I'm Victor with Bentobot and I will see you on another episode. Bye, Bye. everybody.